Hello everyone, this uh, disembodied voice is Dr Mike Cook. I'm one of the directors of Rampart Scotland which does archaeological training and research. Today I'm going to talk about the initial results of our work at Battle Hill Huntley. Now that name is connected to a small skirmish during the Wars of Independence that may or may not have happened and while it's a very cool name, it has absolutely nothing to do with any of the archaeology on site. Slide two, please. Now, those with longer memories may remember maps like this from the early 2000s, when Aberdeenshire was routinely described as a black hole. And these maps were all over the place. Richard Bradley had one. It was a big question mark. Um, honestly, it seems absolutely incredible that this might happen. Um, but they were routine, and, and as I say, Aberdeenshire was a black hole. Slide three, please. Now, um, why did this happen? I hear you cry. Well, in part, it's because everybody important lived in Edinburgh or Glasgow. Uh, it was hard to get to. Uh, there was no bypass. It was a long way away. Yeah, but what about the Western Isles, Argyll, Orkney, Shetland? They're a long way away as well, and the roads are worse. Well, you see, they had rocks, right? So that meant that they were focused, that people were interested in those, the work was done on them, and things moved forward. Now, um, yes, eventually we got Shadow of Benahi, but it was quite small, it's just the Don Valley. Um, it seems to be the last one. Uh, the money, the political will appears to have dried up, and um, we're left with a very very blank area in what is some of the richest archaeology in Scotland. Now um, you know that, I know that, um, but there is a blank on lots of these maps that appear in the literature uh, and the further south you go the more exotic the further away Aberdeenshire seems to be so you know it, it's a tricky area to get work done in or at least it has been. Now for the last 20 years lots lots of us have been digging wee holes here all over the place um, and actually we find archaeology everywhere you just have to look but you have to know what you're looking for and you have to look at the right time of year not in the snow um, certainly not not under the bracken um, not when the bracken's grown not when the bracken's dead really um, in fact it's just best to avoid bracken completely and certainly avoid all those horrible ticks. Actually I reckon the best time is about 50 years after you've planted a conifer plantation. Everything under it is dead including the bracken, thank goodness. Okay get those trees felled and then before the stuff grows back go and have a look. Slide four please. Now this is exactly what was happening at Battle Hill local people were going for a walk and they spotted lumps and bumps. Now my friend, a uh, local archaeologist and all-around good egg, Colin Shepherd, um, spotted these too and we had been working together at Bal in Balbithin and he thought he, this was a hut circle. He asked me to go and have a look and I did. Um, I went along and I said, you know what Colin, I think this smells like a hut circle. It's got that rich fruity aroma and he looked at me and he said, what does a hut circle smell like? And I said, well, Colin, if you don't have the olfactory smell, uh, for olfactory skills to see that, I can't help you. Um, and we agreed it was a hut circle. Um, slide five, please. Now, just to remind you where Battle Hill is, to the immediate east of Huntley. Now, as I say, it's been a former commercial uh, forestry plantation, but it's also been a quarry. This is not really the sort of place you would expect archaeology to survive. It's currently owned by the council and they managed it and they were interested in learning more about their property. Um, so we talked about doing a dig and we decided that there might be more on the hill and it was worth a look. Certainly there were stones around the knoll. So we agreed to an initial five year program and two years later I came back and the place had started to regenerate. Ah! Slide six, please. So this shows you the general area. Um, and we started clearing and cursing uh, and did find the hut circle again. Um, 
but it was hard and actually I have to acknowledge the major support of Mr Steve Gray, the manager of the wood who organised an enormous and annual strimming event on a very large scale which was the only way for us to get to grips with the landscape. Now just while we're looking at this image uh, a few things to point out. The, the scrubby area in the middle is where the conifer plantation was. You can see some of the stumps of the, the trees, but you can also see a fringe of beech and oak trees that were left from an older plantation. Also, this gives you an impression of just how rare a survival the hill was, because arable agriculture has gone over far higher hills in the immediate area. So we actually have quite an interesting and rare survival. Slide seven, please, right now. Needless to say, there was definitely more on the hill than we thought. Um, we have two main areas. The wee hut circle thing is to the left and the west. And um, then there was the knoll to the right and the east. Now this featured a ring of stones around the top as well as two linear banks and a big pile of brash. Now the linear banks roughly coincide to trench 35 and trench 40, but we'll get another slide later on um, showing them. Right. So, slide eight, please. Now, so we started with the hut circle thing, and yes, we had a circle, but we didn't have a hut. Um, there was also a later longhouse over the southern end, perhaps 17th, 18th century. That complicated things. We also found lots of evidence for 19th century uh, forestry activity. Now, we didn't have a hut. We did have a circle, but we didn't have a hut. My nose betrayed me. I'm very disappointed in it. Uh, I shall speak to it later on. Slide nine. Now, as I say, we did have a hut. We did have a, ba oh, a hut circle, sorry. We did have a circle, but we didn't have the hut. So we um, detailed a quarter of the site, a quadrant, and then we, we sunk a small trench lower down through that. What we discovered was um, a mound within our ring bank. Now at the base of the mound we found a mixture of animal and human cremated bones, smashed pottery, quartz, charcoal, lithics. Radiocarbon dating revealed that the site uh, dated to between the Neolithic to the Early Bronze Age. It's actually a relatively rare form of monument called a Neolithic non-megalithic round mound, which seems to have their uh, origins in the early Neolithic and be a focus for rituals. There was one inside a small stone circle excavated nearby, uh, the midtown of Pitglassie, which was dug by the shepherds in the 70s. And for those that like this sort of thing, Alice and Sheridan has done a bigger paper mapping all similar mounds in Scotland. Now, slide 10, please. Returning to the knoll, um, I'm going to focus first on the linear bank to the west of the knoll. That's the left-hand side. Um, this was rather uninspiring. A low linear mound, 30 centimetres high, running for 40 or so metres, two metres wide. But, you know, we're a training deck, so start on the easy stuff, right? Yeah. Um, slide 11. So not only was my nose wrong for smelling hut circles, um, I was also wrong about just how simple this uh, mound was or this linear bank. Right, so the bank sealed a stony thing. We don't quite know what it was. The stony thing is associated with a midden rich soil full of charcoal and pottery. It's dated to the 11th to 12th centuries. The bank itself contained 12th century pottery, what's known as East Coast White Gritty. Very interesting. Definitely some kind of farm or settlement round there because that's where the charcoal and the pottery have come from. Um, quite what the stony feature is, we're not certain. Is it something older that's been mucked around with by this later activity or is it perhaps some kind of rural farm structure? Anyway. This is very exciting because the rural medieval the, the, is one of those really blank areas in Scotland. We know very little about them. Most of the stuff tends to be under modern farms, so it rarely survives. So this is actually very exciting. Right, slide 12, please. Right, slide 12, up to the knoll. Now, you remember those lines of stones that were running around the knoll that I mentioned that Colin had spotted? Well, these turned out to be a rampart, roughly circular, around 30 metres in diameter. 
Wow, a previously unrecorded hill fort. Very exciting. So we've put several holes across this to try and define its shape and characterise the rampart. This revealed lots of cobbling inside and a three metre rampart. We dug into the rampart um, and we thought it had a, some kind of timber lacing, a timber fronting, but we got our radiocarbon dates back. Um, the radiocarbon dates uh, demonstrate that we had a timber enclosure, which was earlier in the Iron Age, and then we had a rampart, which was later. So just to, uh, just to stress that again, the palisaded, the timber enclosure, dates to 400 to 200 Cal BC, while the rampart, which supersedes the palisaded enclosure, dates to between 250 and 400 AD. Now, very exciting and actually absolutely incredible. I mean, you can see from these pictures just how uh, slight the structure is, which is why we relied on Steve and the strimming so much. Now, to date, we have no traces of structures or hearths. Uh, we did get midden material, charcoal, burnt bone, bits of pottery inside the rampart, but very, very fragmentary. So this is going to focus, this is going to be the focus of the, the next stage of the project. And we're going to try and map what's going on in the interior. Very exciting. We would have been doing that this year, but obviously for COVID, uh, that's not, that's proved not possible. Right, we need to go to slide 13, please. So slide 13. Now, you remember I talked about the big pile of brash. Well, remind you, brash is offcuts from felling, branches and rubbish. And it was a great big pile of it right outside where we thought the entrance to the fort was. So we had to clear it. Now, my colleague Therese did the hard work and she came and found me. And she said, you know that mound of brash? It's not actually brash at all. Um, there's actually far more complex than that. It's a mound. Well, that was very exciting. That's what type of mound? That's very interesting. Wowzer. So we dug into the mound and it turns out it's some kind of cairn, perhaps. One meter, one and a half meters, 10 meters diameter. Now, if you stand on the knoll and look west, the wee cairn is a dimple, a dimple to the southwest of the cairn. Mm. And if you stand on that and you look further southwest, you can see Tappad North. Now, we know, thanks to Gordon, that Tappad North has two phases, an Iron Age one dating to 200 BC-ish and a Pictish one dating to 400 AD. Mm. Very, very interesting, very exciting. And for the gullible in the audience, I can assure you, or confirm rather, that it's a completely straight line between the two of them. Amazing! <laughs> right, slide 14, please. Now, digging into the mound, we found hints and lines of terraces, but not much. We're just starting to get uh, some indication of its shape. We did get some Neolithic pottery, and we got some charcoal dating to the 8th to 10th centuries AD. Very interesting. Perhaps overlying with the material under the linear bank. So quite exciting. Right. Slide 15, we're reaching our conclusion. I want to see the timeline, right? So what we have is a Neolithic ring cairn in use between 3,766 Cal BC and 2007, 2,677, the kind of maximum period for that. An incredibly long time. Um, Huntley's first and oldest burial. We have some kind of prehistoric round cairn at the Knoll we have the Iron Age palisaded enclosure, 400 to 200 Cal BC. We have the Pictish univallate enclosure, 256 to 408. The 8th to 10th century midden material in the earlier round, count, ruler, round cairn. We have overlapping with the 11th to 12th century midden material in the later bank. Do we have an 8th to 12th century farm? Very interesting, very rare. We obviously have the 17th to 18th century longhouse, which was over the ring bank. What is left to find? We don't know yet, but there must be loads. Slide 16, please. So, um, this is just to thank everybody. Uh, as I say, Battle Hill is owned and managed by Aberdeenshire Council. So thanks are due to both Steve Gray for his assistance and permission, in addition to the many phases of strimming. Um, Bruce Mann has also provided uh, support for the post-excavation works and is always a source of interesting support. Um, finally, many, many thanks 
are uh, due to all those who helped me on the site, who climbed up the hill, uh, who braved the rain, the wind, the midges, and still came back for more. And finally, a word from our sponsors. Archaeological Research in Progress is a national conference organised each year by Archaeology Scotland and the Society of Antiquaries for Scotland of Scotland, supported by Historic Environment Scotland. Goodness me, three Scotlands all in the same sentence. Can it be too much? Not at all. Well, thank you very much. Uh, for those that are interested in past reports on the site, they are available via our website, Rampart Scotland. Thank you very much, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of the conference. Bye.